What's up, ladies, gents, queens, kings, and commentators? It's the one and only, you can't clone me, queen, baby. And the only one, you can't clone me, Sean, baby. Don't ever <laughs> in your life do that. We're back with another episode uh, review. Another episode review. Y'all already know. We are recapping Sweet Life Los Angeles. This is now episode seven. So we are running through them. Running through them down to the end of my cup. Then, 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 then anything now. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, episode seven, let's get straight into it because this is the last one of the week and it's just a lot to get into per usual because this friend group. It ain't never a dull moment. Baby, baby. Yeah. Okay, so y'all already know from the last episode, we kind of ended off with Tylen and Jalen basically in therapy and just talking about a whole situation of Jalen wanting to have a baby, but Ty saying basically like, you know, she has a career that she's still trying to, you know, make successful and she's just not ready for a child, which is okay. And then we kind of got into the backstory of, you know, their whole situation with the twins, the abortion. It was a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot. It was like heavy on my heart, like a lot. <laughs> it definitely painted a clearer picture of them, though. It, it definitely did. And it also, once again, makes sense why they are together. Like, I see why they are a unit. Um, but moving on from there, we kind of get into Thailand, Amanda, and Candace, and basically. It reiterating, reiterating. Um, Tyler is basically telling them about the therapy session. Um, and then that's when Candace kind of bring in, like, damn, like we kind of going through the same thing. Now, mind y'all, Jalen and Keelan are cousins. So the fact that their mindset is the same. Cut from the same. Cloth, lit literally. So the fact that their mindset is the same is crazy. Like they need some new mentors, individuals around them so they can like know that there is better out there. Not saying that they don't, but they may not have it in that um, in that part of their life. Like, you know, you can have mentors that are great business people. You can have mentors that are great with, you know, making sure like you, they're a good lifestyle coach in your life. But as far as like relationship wise, they might not have that. And I'm not the saying OGs that they don't. can't be your only mentor. Yeah, no, you got to have more so you can think better and just want better and want more because y'all women over here, over here looking for rings in the marriage as they should. I mean, y'all been together for five years. I'm not saying it's a rush because y'all could go a little longer while y'all over here wanting babies. But at the same time, y'all not thinking like, y'all thinking one is more important than the than other. other. Like, yeah. yeah. Or thinking like you're ready for one and not ready for the other. You can, when they you can get a divorce. That baby ain't going nowhere. So I just, I don't understand it. But needless to say, that's what Candace kind of bring up. And then Amanda brings up how, you know, Gerald and Rob and no. um, PJ had them met up and they were talking about Ty and they were just talking about the whole situation and how Gerald basically want an apology. And Ty basically said, well, baby, he not getting it. He can so. keep, wait he can keep, he going to keep, he can keep and he going to keep waiting on it. Because he don't have no choice because he's not getting it. And I mean, she, it seems like she's standing on it now. If she going to apologize within the, the rest of the season. We don't know, but as of right now, my girl said she ain't apologizing, and I kind of, you know, understand why. <laughs> you understand why, you know? Um, And then moving on from there, we get into a situation with PJ and Bree, and not so much a situation, but they meet a up. A link up. Yeah, a link a up. A gang slide. A gang. <laughs> it I, wasn't really a gang. It was only two. It was a couple slide. I, I liked it. I like seeing Bree and PJ this season, because they their, their relationship seems really, like, brother-sisterly. I really just appreciate, like, where they are this season. Like, it, and it seems good to see on TV. And I, I like a good hookah session, too. So. I like, of course you do. I like um, Bree and PJ. I just think it's so funny that they're calling each other, like, you know, little sister and stuff. When, when we first started watching the show, we thought they were, like, hitting on each other. And they liked they each other. They did used to date. Date and stuff. So that's why it's so crazy. Like, oh, yeah, like, y'all brother and sister now? Like, oh, this is a thing? Like, okay. But I, I like it. Don't get me wrong. I like it. Like, they keep it real with each other. They talk, um, mess about each other cars, cars they drive. Cars, like, I don't even think Brie got a car. I really think that was up. The Honda wasn't hers? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I still think Brie don't got no car. We ain't see her with a car yet. Because when we just seen her the other episode, she was standing at the corner waiting for PJ. <laughs> <laughs> she she got butted by Brie and Bateri. That's all she need. That's all she wants. I'm going to say that's all she need. <laughs> 
But so we seen that, and they were just having a conversation about, you know, who gonna come because they get ready for the Mexico trip. So who's coming? Who you bring in? So Brie like, I'm for the bring Pateri and um, PJ like, I'm not for the bring anybody. As I mean, I understand why after last year. I see why he don't want to bring nobody. Maybe PJ like, I'm trying to be Switzerland. I don't want no problem. But if any trip you were supposed to bring somebody, it was this one. It was this one. But I, re I respect his. Um, I respect. He he chilling. PJ is at a space right now. He knows. He knows he's a hot topic, hot button issue. He rather just be be mutual. Be true. Be on the uh, uh, even playing field with everybody, not Jalen, because that ain't gonna. That is happen. not. But yeah. everybody else even playing field. Um, but moving on from that, we get into some scenes. A scene with Candace and Keaton. And I was actually so ready for this because I like Candace. Everybody kind of remember Candace as being raw, 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 raw last season. Like she was on one, but she is she the was complete opposite. And but she always can't. I ain't gonna say she always. I low key like kind of found her Instagram, and I kind of seen like the type of feel she is. She was in, so I knew she was like she had a uh, her perception from last season was definitely she was perceived wrong last season. Yeah. Because she was in a drunk, like she was in a drunk. She was spirit. lit. Like she she was, was in a vibe. We don't always. We all don't have them lit moments the on moments, vacation. It just so happened, her was on TV. <laughs> but um, but I could like even see her in this season, just having her talk or say certain things. Like all I could think about is like, I like Candace. Like I kept saying that to myself. And then in this situation, same thing. I was like, I thought I was gonna like Keelan too. And and I think I. Mm, I don't know. I still gotta get into Keelan a little bit more, cause I'm not too sure. He move. He move a little funny too sometimes. I'm not sure. I mean, that is Jalen cousin, cousin. But I'm not sure how I feel about Keelan, only because at certain situations I'd be like, okay, that makes sense. And then other situations is like, boy, what? Like the situation now with him and Candice, they are basically. They met up for a little date, boxing match, mm -hmm. workout vibe type yeah, stuff. Yeah, I, I wouldn't even say met up, cause they live together. So they just went to work out together. And and with the first little few couple of clips, it looked like they were having a good time. He's making her booty. It was just real cute, <laughs> very relationship. They gave you a date night idea? No. Oh, you ain't never doing nothing like that? I will. I'm not bringing out like that. But um, it was real cute, but then it was time to get real serious real fast. And they just basically start talking about, again, the whole marriage and baby situation. And they kind of in a situation like Ty and Jayla, as far as like they've been together four or five years. Um, she ready to get married. They used to talk about getting married, but he he wants a baby. And I don't think it was so much he wants a baby, but he's more like, if we have a baby, I don't mind. I'm not I'm not pressed to get married, but, I'm, but if we get... But I also want... To have unprotected sex with you, I want you to get your body ready for a baby. Meaning, I want you to stop taking birth control. So not only are we having unprotected sex, you're not on birth control. I want you to be ready, and I want your body to be ready for us to have a baby. But I'm not ready for marriage to propose. And mind you, Keelan is 28. Granted. The more I'm, as I get older, I'm realizing like we're we're grown adults now. But like, why is that concept of like listening not fundamental at this point? If your partner is telling you, "Hey, this is one of my non-negotiables. This is something that I really, really want. This is something that I see happening first. Why are you bouncing back with no? Because clearly, if somebody's telling you they want A for C to happen, and you saying you ready to. Be, you thinking all you need is B for C to happen? Like there, there's clearly a fundamental disconnect. So where, where is the issue? Like what are, what are you not understanding? She does not want to have a baby if there is no ring. Mm -hmm. And if all you want is the baby, clearly y'all have an issue. So why aren't we talking about the, that issue instead of you consistently putting up baby, baby, baby? Mm -hmm. And I also don't. I hate the fact that they keep using the. I have things to get in order. I have a business to do this. I God's this. timeline. Yeah, oh, God's that pissed time. me off. Ooh. That that pissed me off. Don't bring God into your mess. No, don't do that. Is it in the marriage? I was about Bible? to say because if we want to be, I was about to say, tell, tell me about it because you know the Bible back front and back. Because if we gonna go with anything, God gonna want you to get married. Like 
if, if, if you, anything you want to say God's timeline, you're not going to have no baby till the marriage come. Yeah. First comes marriage, then comes a carriage. Correct. So that it wasn't making sense. And he kept trying to, I feel like he was deflecting big time. Um, he was gaslighting her. Very much so because he kept saying, we have to address the issues within our re relationship first. We have to do this. We have to do that. But she kept saying, well, oh, and one of his main things was, you know, they argue a lot. Like, they have, they have problems. And she's like, well, I'm working on myself. I go to therapy. I found I found a way that, like, if we are in a disagreement or, you know, it's about that we about to take it there, I know how to walk away and then come back so I don't say nothing that I'm going to regret later. Like, I'm, I'm working on this. And you worry about me being 100%. I would never, she's never going to be 100%, Keely. Nobody will ever be 100%. It's, 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 it's impossible. It's no such thing. But the fact that she's working to the, the highest number possible is all that matters. She's trying to be the best person for you if you feel like that's the problem. But not even to mention, like, if you have issues that you know you need to work on, why are you trying to bring kids into a situation? Into that. Like, if you know, like, if you point out one of our main issues is arguing, and that's your reason for not wanting to get married, but you're still okay with us arguing and then bringing a child in to experience that dysfunction. Mm. Make the math make sense. It's not. Make it, make it, make it logically sound like that's a smart statement, because it's, it's not. It's not. It's not going to, because, like you said, he's gaslighting her. He's not making sense. Everything he's saying in his mind makes so much sense because he's a businessman. He has things going on. I'm a businessman. I got the money to fund a child, but I'm not ready to get married. Not, not to mention that the fact that they are already, they are, they're already living together. They're in joint business. Candace quit her job to join business with, with you. Him. So she, you are are connected at the foundation financially already. Yep. But you don't want to get married, like like that seems like the logical. And it's so crazy because, I mean, we do kind of live in a time where this is a thing. Like, people really, even women, like, women are saying they do not care about marriage, but they want, they don't, they want their kids. They want the babies. And I'm just not understanding, like, when did marriage become something that people don't strive for or want? Like, it's a beautiful thing, so why is it not a goal anymore? I and mean, I, it's my goal, but why but isn't I'm it, not, like, a main goal? I'm not against... And I'm not against having kids before marriage if, or anything like I that. But I feel like if it happens, then it yeah. happens. But if you're presenting, if you're presenting the issues on why you want to have kids before marriage first, and it's just not making sense, we it's more so looking like we don't. Not only do we not need to have kids, but we don't need to be together. Yeah. Cause. Cause what are we talking about? Like we're clearly not on the same playing field. We not. You playing you playing soccer, I'm playing football. Like, cause we we two different places. Like it's just you not You playing Uno, I'm playing Connect Four. Jenga. Like and, and and that's what I think gets me in this. Like, I feel like too though what like got Candace and she acknowledged it is the fact that that low key I feel like is a reason she she loves Keelan. She likes that that she dominant. Said she said it. I like his dom that's what He's a wolf and I'm a lioness. Why you had to say? I want oh, you to be my bar. That's your bar. Say it again. No, you already said it. It's cool. <laughs> but yeah, basically, like she liked that dominance. But a man like Keelan that that is so dominant, like he's gonna always stand firm in what he thinks, what he feels, and how he thinks things should move, especially within a relationship. And I feel like she does. I like she gets her points across, and she would probably like you know let him know how she feels. Like we've seen it, but it's like it's gonna be hard for it to truly and really get through to him because he's so in his own head in his own ways and it's like at what point what point do you calm down where you at so you can meet her where she at and understand and like, understand what time do we understand the comfort what at what point do we actively start even listening to what the other partner has to say what the fuck no listening to what you are saying because nothing you That's said it. made sense to her point and that was the problem. She kept saying, like, you want you putting words in my hand, my my um words in my mouth, and you're not listening to me. He never listened to her. And then he also tried to use the excuse of, oh, you went talking to your friends and I try to bring that into my relationship. That's not what happened. Cause this is something that she clearly been felt like she been talking about. She even said, y'all, before y'all even moved in and fully got together, y'all talked about being married. And now all of a sudden that's not even a, a, a option anymore. Not so much an option, but it's not on your mind anymore, but you're okay with kids. Mm. That don't even make sense. 
It's not making sense, Keely. Like, come on, be for real. You and Jalen, like, ugh, ugh. Well, that ain't, you ain't like that. Cause it just, it's just, it's so mind boggling, toggling, boggling. boggling. It's mind boggling to me that they are really pushing the kids and not the marriage. Like, come on, bro. And I'm so glad that Candace and um, Tyler are alpha women that they gonna stand firm. That like, they not weak women. And I, I love that about them. But, but the, the, the guys, they gotta get it together. So anyways, talking about getting it together, child. We get into <laughs> this. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> you like that? I like that one. But yeah, talking about getting it together, we get into, you know, a whole like bathing suit model situation of the girls, Miami, um, Rebecca, and Bree basically modeling. Um, what's the girl and name? And Rob with two Bs. I, ain't, I wasn't going to say Rob name yet. Oh. But they was basically modeling. Um, what's the girl name? Cheryl. Cheryl stuff. And of course, Rob was there just. W at this point. <laughs> um, and then they just start talking and they start having a conversation. And of course the conversation ends up being about Thailand. <laughs> Baby, they on Thailand. Listen, they on Thailand. This season? Yeah. This season is, oh, Thailand, you're going down. And I think they kind of do need this because they do need, for next season, season three, they do need to establish some type of like, um... I don't know the word I'm looking for. They need to establish something so Tylen don't always feel like she's big dog. But it's like, why why y'all got to go through all this to, you know, establish that? Like, Tylen would have, baby, Tylen wasn't the last probably in our, in our friend group, to be honest, because she probably would have been, like, red for Phil, for that <laughs> attitude, for that mouth, for everything. Like, she would have. But we still love you, though, friend. Like, that would have been us. Um, So... Which is so funny that I just said what I said because within Cheryl saying what, you know, Cheryl talking about Thailand and everybody else feeling, you know, the type of ways that they're feeling, at some point Cheryl says like, oh, you know, Thailand is a common denominator, dom, dom, denominator of all the problems and issues that everyone is having, but nobody wants to confront her about it. So Rob says, Look, seems like y'all scared of her. And, and Cheryl was upset about that he said it, but I mean, let's call it spade a spade. This is exactly what it seems like. Y'all scared her. And this is one of the times that I feel like Rob wasn't doing too much. He was saying what everybody was thinking. Yeah. And, yeah, it's like, y'all afraid y'all might be out the show? I don't think they, that's what they're afraid of. I just really think, like, but y'all need a bad phone. It ain't, I, we ain't never, I've never seen Ty get buck enough to be like, where, so she, she's not, I don't think she's hostile physically. Nothing about her is scary. So that's why I'm like, I'm so confused why nobody won't put her in her place. Like, if you feel some type of way, say that shit. And granted, Cheryl did, but when it was Cheryl put Ty in her place? At a group chat? I don't think so. No, I don't think she put her in her place. I think she, you know, she stood up for her man. She stood up for the situation. She did, but... It just didn't sit right because at the end of the day, Gerald was wrong and Cheryl, you was wrong too. So it didn't hit at, like it should have. Yeah. Like it didn't it didn't move us because y'all was wrong. Like we wasn't rooting for y'all. So it didn't hit. Ever. But everybody else. Not now either. <laughs> but everybody else, like they should have been put time in her place. So it's like y'all missed that mark. Now also too, uh, with them, Cheryl was talking about how she feel like Ty, um, her and Ty can't really like, you know, really build get, past. Yeah, evolve with their friendship because Cheryl is in his feelings. And that's when Rob was like, like, why are you why he's so mad about this word? Like, I would and she was like, Well, this was his friend. And, and if this you, was you, how would you gonna feel? I wouldn't care. I wouldn't no, I'm saying that's what she asked Rob. No, that's what I'm like, saying. He said I I wouldn't care. Like that would that wouldn't even be a factor on my mind no more. That wouldn't have been like it's not even a factor, like, okay. At this point, we all know how Ty get crazy out the mouth. So I would have just been like, child, she just talking. And I would have been proving everybody wrong, but you have, you have right. yet to do that. To prove, yeah. So it's like, that's why he's really in his feelings, and that's so crazy. Speaking of feelings, let's move on to um, Mexico, baby, because it was, it was a lot of feelings. Feelings. So deep in my feelings. I didn't want you to pick it up. I just wanted you to keep going. Mexico, baby. So, couples trip in Mexico, all planned by the lovely Amanda. 
So everybody's flying out. All of the couples are supposed to be there. Mind you, not all of the couples like immediately show up. So the gang that we first see get to Mexico, we have Amanda, we have Rob, we have Tylen, we have Jalen, we have Bree, we who's waiting on Pateri to come. We have Becky who's there solo. We have Miami who shows up with Rob with two Bs. That's about to get crazy. Um, and then we have the newcomers. We have uh, Marcus and we have QC. What's his name? AQ. AQ. Yeah. Quality, whatever. We have What's Goldie. Quality <laughs> we have him. Right. I think that's everybody, right? So basically we have relationships, we have friends, and we have singles. I don't know why Sean just went through all that. Because I want everybody to know who was there. Needless to say, so we all know who's there, who ain't there, and it really don't matter. All we know is it's time for everybody to get their room. So it's time for Amanda, since it's her trip, she kind of assigns the room. Here come them chalkboards again with the names on it. Now, this is where the drama kind of starts because Amanda tried it, and she knows she tried it because she gave her and Ty the biggest rooms. Okay, understandable. She gave Bree a big room, understandable. She gave... Jerry and them, um, and Cheryl a nice looking room. Now it was funny because she, it was like a little baby, little carriage in there. Carriage in there. And you know, he was talking about some Cheryl would be mad if she was here because we ain't there yet. We know y'all not there yet. Y'all barely, I mean, barely they, moved they, in they, together. They closer currently there than I mean, anybody we else. Know we know y'all proposed. At this point, everybody should have seen <laughs> on social media. So we know you proposed to her, but it's just so crazy. Last season, you barely wanted to move in and now y'all proposing, but that's fine. I actually <laughs> love that. Like that's I love that because I love love. So I'm rooting and I'm happy for y'all. But we know y'all ain't ready for kids. You barely wanted to move in with the girl. You know? mm -hmm. And then we move into everybody else getting a room in Miami and Rebecca got a share room in his bunk beds. Bunk beds. Miami is living. As they, she should. They walk into the room. Oh, I'm not feeling it. Correct. It's the fact that Amanda walked in the room first. And then she tried to like close it and like let's redo this. Like you knew you was giving them that room. You knew that. And then that's when um she was like, I mean, it was like, oh, this room is not so bad. So I meant my Amanda said, well, give me your room. Like, let's try it then. Quiet. Right. Like what? Like y'all keep trying this girl. And it's like, I'm the type of person, I don't, I'm the type of person that does not care for rooms. When we go on trips, like I'm the type, I would sleep on the floor. Like, the floor is comfortable to me anyway. It's probably not on the trip. But, like, if we was, like, gang, like, you know, I'm the type of person, like, I'm not for to fight anybody about a bed because I know we not, we barely going to be in here. We barely for to be here. We for to be out. We for to be having fun. Plus, we got pools. We got lounge chairs. We got rocking chairs. We got couches. This is a beautiful big home. I, like, slept, I slept outside in Punta. Is that like, look, like, so it's like I'm knowing for a fact, like, I'm not going to be pressed about this room. But in this situation, Miami deserved a good room. Because it was Amanda's time to make amends for what happened in New York. Exactly. It was her time. And she once again did what she do. And not only play, I ain't going to say she played victim, but she she tried to be nice nasty. That's what it is. You being nice and nasty. And I do think Amanda still got some animosity towards Miami, but nobody really want to talk about that yet. Mm. Nobody has talked about that, but she is something. It's something it's there. there. It's yeah. something there, for sure. So, needless to say, it's time for them to get ready for the end of the day, and it's also about to be the end of the episode. And basically, everybody's just at the table, everybody talking. All white dinner, but everybody didn't come in all white. Was it really all white? Maybe it was white and blue. And he just didn't get the memo. Like, even when somebody say white in another color, I think they, I think they, they mean all white. Because, you know, everybody had some accents of blue. He just missed a mark and had on all blue, and it was cheesy, but had on all blue. I think that's what happened. White with an accent of blue, not taking into account that it's supposed to be all white. And, sir, you watched the show last year. You know it's supposed to be all white. It was a whole big thing last year about the all white situation. But then, let's just say. Marcus ass came in there cheesy. <laughs> Needless to say, um, they at the table and everybody just talking and Gerald goes and Well no. Um Tylen asked Jer which I found to be so like it shocked me. Ty goes to ask Gerald Nancy. who she hasn't talked to in forever. Gerald, how you feeling? Well, of course I feel awkward, like 
This is the first time we've all been on a trip since the last big messy trip. We're all here. We're all here for the first time since BBB. Yeah. I feel weird, but I'm glad we're all here in this space to be able to, you know, talk and dialogue. Talon, you not slick, because that was... Exactly. So, out of nowhere, Miami... Um, I don't know what happened, but Miami randomly starts explaining who Gerald is to no. Rob. We yes. Don't yes. After Gerald was saying all that, he, I guess... I don't know what happened. Yeah. Rob goes... Miami goes to explain who Rob is to... Um, Miami goes to explain who Gerald is to Rob. And then, that's when he was like, oh, Mr. Sociopath? I remember because he said he said Cheryl's not here yet, and I'm here without my better half. And then no, that was after the fact. No, that was that I'm telling you. No, that was before that because then Miami goes, "Oh, you met Cheryl. This is Gerald, her boyfriend." And then he goes, "Yeah, the better half, the beautifuler half." And then he goes, "Oh, I'm confused. So this Mister." See, I ain't see all that. Oh, I'm confused and all that. They didn't show all that. But no, okay, see, continue. Was, he continue. was like, "So then he was like, oh, I'm confused. So you missed the sociopath. Boom, the room goes silent." No, that room wasn't silent. They was laughing. <laughs> they was laughing. I went silent. I, was... I was too, cause wrong place, wrong time, and wasn't needed on call. And like, you know that was messy, Rob, with two knees. But let me tell you. So I feel like everyone felt like he said that based off of one watching last year, last season, and also to of course Ty being there, and. And Gerald also said something in effect of, well, my friends is saying it behind my back. So now people I don't know is saying it in front of me. So I feel like they connected that to Ty. And yes, Ty said it. But I don't think that's why he said I don't think that's why Rob said it. I think Rob said said that because right before that, we just seen all of them together at the thing, at the store trying on bathing suits. And Cheryl was complaining about that whole situation that whole time. I think he said that based off of the conversation he was having with Cheryl. Not so much from last season. I'm sorry, but ain't no way in hell Rob with two Bs, whose best friend Miami is on the show, did not watch last season and did not know who the hell Gerald was. You did that to be messy. At the foundation, you did that to be messy. You knew who Gerald was. He did. He, he did. You wanted your moment on TV. He had Which it. gets me, ba and you had it. He had it. But like that's the type of stuff. Like that's why I'm, I'm not really feeling Rob with two Bs on this episode. Cause like that was weird. Like that at its foundation was just weird. It made no sense. Like you know, and I get it. Like you, you try to paint it like, oh, you just meeting these people for the first. Common sense says he knows who the hell Gerald is. So either you doing it for a storyline, producers had you say it, whatever, whatever the case may be, that was messy. And you came in that situation mm -hmm. in which I was glad they clapped at him back for it. You came into a situation that was meant for healing. Who clapped back? You got to realize nobody clapped back. They ain't clapped back they at him? They laughed. Let me tell you, this is what oh, happened. Uh, we they laughed. Yeah, you so right. they laughed. So to they didn't clap back yet. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking for it. But they didn't clap. They also, even though they did clap back within this scene, they didn't clap back for Gerald at the end of the day. So to clear up the whole environment in the air at that moment, that's when Rob tries to come in and Rob was like, so how do everybody like their rooms? So that's like, he thought that was clearing the air. That ain't doing nothing but starting nothing up. Because Miami, said, Cause Miami like was like, well, you know, she basically keep getting the short end of the stick. And it's funny because Jalen was the one that said, y'all keep giving her the short end of the stick. But it's true. So then that's when... Um, Rob with two Bs agrees. Robbie, yeah, he agreed. He like, you let them do this to you again? Like, you keep letting them play you? And of course, Amanda be acting like, uh, don't, don't, don't. Like, Amanda, you know what you be doing. Like, I just feel like that girl did not deserve that type of room. I'm sorry. Like, it's I have no... I have, like... I just don't Not even know what to say. In a row. I just don't have nothing to say because come on, like, come on. I don't I ain't say she had to have the best, but bunk beds, twin bed, like come on. For real. The third trip in a row. Y'all keep trying to grow and, and, and she ain't saying nothing because clearly we keep saying my game, like she keep being cool with shit. Like she keep like, okay, it is what it is, whatever. But Rob here done. Nah. Rob ain't like it ain't whatever. Like, no, y'all doing her dirty, y'all doing her wrong. So that's when Tylen tried to step in. Well, that's when he he asked Amanda first, "What's the issue? Like, is there a beef here? Mm -hmm. Like, why you keep giving her the short?" And then that's when Tylen like, mm -hmm. "Hold on." 
Exactly, and it's Jalen was like, Tyler, shut up. The rest of That's the when Jalen was like, and I was, I said the same thing as soon as I seen Ty open her mouth, I said, Shut up. Wait, we didn't even mention the fact like why it made it was even crazier. Was Tylen started off that meeting at that table saying, I'm sorry for being in everybody's business? Oh, yeah, and now that you said she's saying, I'm sorry, they did apologize to Bree too from the whole situation, but moving on from that. Yeah, she said all that, and then only for her to jump into a situation that had nothing to do with her. Let Amanda defend herself. We have yet to see Amanda stay in 10 toes. Like, baby, what you really working with at this point? Because what? And it may be like a, a, a you thing You she checked Jer I mean, she checked Jalen, though. She was like, well, she didn't check him correctly, like, rightfully. But she was like, okay, you don't want me to, well, sit back. You don't have to. Regardless of the fact, I don't know, it's something within Tyler where she do feel like she got to defend her friends. But it's like, at what point do we see your friends defend themselves? Like Amanda, Amanda is the one who assigned that girl that room, so she need to speak for herself. What, like I'm confused, Tyler. We do not need you to speak at this very moment. You will have your time, but this is not it. It, it was not it. So then that's when we um so Tyler trying to you know go and tip for tat with him, and then that's when Gerald decides to get back in it, and he tried to like, well you don't even know me, and you called me a sociopath, sir. <laughs> You had your time. You should have defended yourself when he said what he said when he mm -hmm. said it. You did it. So don't try to come in because everybody ganging up on Rob now. You all of a sudden want to come in because Bri even Brendan was like, yeah, like that's your best friend, but you're doing too much. He was at the end of the day. You was doing too much. But also like, no, like y'all are trying Miami. Gerald, you had your time. You didn't want to defend yourself. Okay, we have moved on. Like. Baby. My situation with Ty is my situation with Ty. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. He was he he low key tried to paint a picture like we he was that was his time to plant like me and Ty we we gonna talk later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Try to sneak it in. <laughs> we gonna talk later. We gonna exactly like you have nothing to talk about. Ty, I'm not Ty, Ty, Ty never had no plans to talk to you this week. <laughs> like what, bro? It was so funny when he said that. Oh, you know me and Cheryl aren't really like you know this is unorthodox. Shut up! <laughs> what are we talking about? Like, but basically, then Miami comes to the defense of her friend, which I feel like she should have because he it, it had become a point where the table was low key kind of like trying to attack him, and Miami was like, "Well, don't attack him. If y'all got an issue with what he said, attack me because at this point he's he's defending me." I didn't me. like that. No. No, Miami. No, he he put himself in that fire. Let he him burn. He did. He Let did. him burn. He got that much mouth. He can. He should be able to defend himself. Miami ain't need to take that heat. Cause he started it like, and this also comes to like Miami. Don't try to take that heat for him. Correct him. You say, friend, friend, don't don't say that. Not right now, friend. It, but like, and that goes back to what Ty said about Rob with two Bs not being properly briefed before. No, he was properly briefed. Oh, they, he just ain't care. And he didn't care. Come on, be for real. At the end of the day, everything he's calling them no. out, it's old shit. It's, he That's watched it. He it's watched old, it on yeah. TV. He, everything he's calling them out on is not. It's not like it's wrong. It's just old. He was. He was properly briefed. We seen the he show. Briefed, he briefed himself. We seen the show. And Miami gave, gave probably gave him a backstory. And guess what? He just late. You're defending her too late. So it's like we have moved on. So let's let's okay. You bringing it up, old mess. Even though he ain't the only one, cause Jerry's trying to bring an old man too. <laughs> <laughs> but still, it's like it's all baby, let it go. And and Tyler just wanna talk to talk. And then that's when he was like, Girl, why are you hanging with them? Baby, he didn't say to start a drama, and I'm here for it. But it's like also too, sometimes you overdo, like you overdo your drama, and I feel like Rob is gonna overdo his drama. Like he's gonna like, get played like, real quick. Yeah, like we we're gonna like not like you real quick because of how you're going about it. And also, too, like, it's wrong, like, find some new shit to talk about and, and defend her own. Like, the bad, like, when he was defending her about the bad situation to Amanda, I respected it. But. Because I was like, why Why do you continue? And he low-key checked Miami, too. Like, why do you keep letting them? Yeah. And I think Miami is just like, child, I'm just here for the shit. <laughs> really. And the vibes at this point. Yeah. Because I'm like, sure they ain't really paying for that trip. We, we, we well, who, really who knows? <laughs> but they wasn't on the PJ this time, though. I know that much. <laughs> but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this show, this episode. Y'all already know what to do. Like this video and show your girl and your boy some love. Come your thoughts and let's discuss what y'all thought about this episode. And last but certainly not least, subscribe and join the Queen of Babies. Bye.